Determination. We are determined to pursue the highest goals. The Terman Report predicted the global emergence of KAIST 30 years ago, even before KAIST was created. A firm belief and commitment to developing ideas contributed to today's KAIST. We have worked hard to address the problems faced by Korea. The first Korean satellites that were made by KAIST are now known through the world. The first humanoid robot in Korea, Hubo, emerged as top global technology. Now, based on these achievements, we are moving forward toward new challenges to make the world better. Half a century ago, KAIST was a beacon of the hope for the Korean people at the beginning of Korea's industrialization. Now, KAIST hopes to fulfill its new mission brought about by the emergence of the fourth industrial revolution and will once more take on the leadership role for the future of Korea. We must innovate with confidence to realize our goals. We cannot imagine our future without innovation. In the era of the fourth industrial revolution, we are exploring what KAIST can do best. A world where all technologies are converged together. The answer is transdisciplinary education. By dismantling the walls between the disciplines, we aim to educate global leaders who have a strong foundation of basic studies, creativity, and ethical awareness. We need innovation through collaboration, even in the field of research. We are pursuing cutting-edge R&D that creates new knowledge and technologies. We aim to be the first, the best, and the only ones. A university that educates social entrepreneurship KAIST will serve as the hub of R&DB that creates economic value-added knowledge. A place where research and business will mutually benefit one another. KAIST is constantly innovating in order to play a crucial role in contributing to the future. Our unwavering dedication to innovation will open up a new future. We are ready for the future. It is our mission to provide a clear vision in times of uncertainty. We will give you strong confidence when pursuing dreams. ในดวงยามกันยันเดนยองกุลทุ่งเอโซโอคิโยเนชิโรบุดาคือโจกรุปในดวงยามวันจาเดลอันสุดอาพฤษยันเคตัวอันชิสิกินเกตัวเอโบ
Determination. We are determined to pursue the highest goals. The Terman Report predicted the global emergence of KAIST 30 years ago, even before KAIST was created. A firm belief and commitment to developing ideas contributed to today's KAIST. We have worked hard to address the problems faced by Korea. The first Korean satellites that were made by KAIST are now known through the world. The first humanoid robot in Korea, Hubo, emerged as top global technology. Now, based on these achievements, we are moving forward toward new challenges to make the world better. Half a century ago, KAIST was a beacon of the hope for the Korean people at the beginning of Korea's industrialization. Now, KAIST hopes to fulfill its new mission brought about by the emergence of the fourth industrial revolution and will once more take on the leadership role for the future of Korea. We must innovate with confidence to realize our goals. We cannot imagine our future without innovation. In the era of the fourth industrial revolution, we are exploring what KAIST can do best. A world where all technologies are converged together. The answer is transdisciplinary education. By dismantling the walls between the disciplines, we aim to educate global leaders who have a strong foundation of basic studies, creativity, and ethical awareness. We need innovation through collaboration, even in the field of research. We are pursuing cutting-edge R&D that creates new knowledge and technologies. We aim to be the first, the best, and the only ones. A university that educates social entrepreneurship, KAIST will serve as the hub of R&DB that creates economic value-added knowledge. A place where research and business will mutually benefit one another. KAIST is constantly innovating in order to play a crucial role in contributing to the future. Our unwavering dedication to innovation will open up a new future. We are ready for the future. It is our mission to provide a clear vision in times of uncertainty. We will give you strong confidence when pursuing dreams. ในดวงดาวขยันเดินยงกุลทุ่งเอโซโอ้ที่อยู่ในชีโรบุดาตัวเจ้ากรุ๊ปในดวงดาวอันจัดเดอร์เอ่อคืออาพฤษยานเคต
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pioneers 2071 Question in the Next 50 Years Conference. Thank you very much for joining us today for the opening ceremony of the conference. It is my honor to host it and represent KAIST in this truly amazing international event. For the opening remarks and the speech on behalf of the students who have come up with the concept, thought every detail out, planned and organized this event, please welcome the head of the planning committee of the Pioneers 2071 conference, Kyung Bin Ko. The time we started planning for this conference was exactly the time the COVID-19 pandemic broke out. During the outbreak, entrepreneurs would provide their service to the world. Professors would share their knowledge with their students and the general public for the understanding of the virus. Scientists and researchers would strive to develop the vaccine. And finally, governments and leaders would discuss and devise preventive policies for safety and well-being of the society. We, the planning committee, also asked ourselves, what can we do as undergraduate students to contribute to overcoming this challenge humanity is facing? This question then changed into, what can we do to contribute to being prepared for such challenges in the future? As an answer to this question, we decided to provide students, the citizens of the future society, with the opportunity to explore and research potential crises that our humanity may come across in the next 50 years and beyond. In this conference, I would like participants to think about and discuss possible solutions along with policies, technology, and innovative ideas. I believe that experiences like participating in the Pioneers 2071 conference will certainly make changes in the society that we will be creating and living in the future. Hence, dear participants, voters, and guests of the conference, no matter how you take part in the conference, the time you spend here the next few days will be precious and valuable because we will have asked ourselves by the end of the conference what knowledge we need and how to apply this knowledge in order to move forward as a community. I'm now delighted to welcome you all and declare the Pioneers 2071 conference officially open. Thank you very much, Kyun Bin, for your speech. Now, please welcome the president of KAIST, who supported the idea of the conference from the very beginning and together with the KAIST administration has helped it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to the speech by the president of KAIST, Professor Song Chol Shin. Ready? Hello everyone, welcome to the Pioneers 2071 conference. Thank you all for joining this conference online. Your participation makes our 50th anniversary celebration even more special. I would like to thank our brilliant student organizers, including Kyung Bin Go, for making this excellent conference possible. Thank you to Professor Sung Yeop Yu and Professor Seo Gyeong Ryu for their input and guidance. We appreciate all your hard work. We have planned many excellent events in honor of the 50th anniversary of KAIST. Among them, this Pioneers 2071 highlights our celebration. We want to reflect on what we have achieved and envision the new future ahead through this celebration. 50 years is probably not a big deal for some universities who boast hundreds of years of tradition. However, this is very meaningful for us when you think of the very dynamic history of Korea. KAIST was founded by the Korean government in 1971 during its early industrialization stage. The government decided to establish KAIST, the first advanced research-oriented science and technology university in Korea, in order to foster top-notch scientists and engineers. The government urgently needed the elite workers who would drive economic growth 
by pushing science and technology. Korea worked so hard to realize this goal, and KAIST has faithfully accomplished its founding mission over the past 50 years. The result is stunning as we are witnessing. Korea has emerged as a global leader in the technological innovation, especially in the IT sector. Our dynamic culture is shaking the world stage. Over half a century, Korea has transformed from one of the poorest countries in the world, whose GDP stood at around 100 US dollars, to one of the top 10 economic powers in the world. I'm very proud that Kai stage played an important role in this extraordinary achievement. In this journey, Kai also has grown into a world-class university. I think we have successfully capitalized on our national challenges by taking advantage of new opportunities over the past 50 years. We are now facing another set of challenges. This is not just at the national level, but on a global scale caused by COVID-19. This pandemic is the most daunting crisis in modern history that people around the globe are experiencing at the same time. The pandemic totally disrupted our lives and we are seeing new normals evolving. I would like to remind you that the world has always been volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous at various times and various places. We know that crises always come with opportunities. New knowledge and the advancement of science and technology pushed humanity to become more prosperous. The world in 2071 will be totally different. New technologies and new crises will have appeared. I believe the pursuit of knowledge based on science and technology, a challenging spirit, creative solution, and caring minds will overcome all the challenges ahead. There is saying that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Now the future will be yours. I look forward to new future you will create and wish you great success in your future endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Shin, for the speech and all the support you have shown throughout the process of organization. Now, let us proceed to the speeches by Professor Song Yong Ryu, Associate Vice President of Student Life, and Professor Sung Hyop Yu, Associate Vice President of Student Affairs and Policy, who have helped the planning committee organize this event. Hi, everyone. I am Song Yong Ryu, the Associate Vice President of Student Life. We sincerely appreciate your participation in our event, Pioneers 2071, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of KAIS. We were happily surprised to see the high achievements of your work. They indeed showed your hard work and passion. We are looking forward to your presentations and debates. Good luck to you all. Hello everyone, I'm Sing Hyop Yu, Associate Vice President of Student Affairs and Policy here at KAIST. It is my great pleasure to have you all in this great event, Pioneers 2071, questioning the next 50 years, which belongs to a series of the events planned to celebrate the bicentennial anniversary of KAIST. When the early pioneers conceived 50 years ago an idea of science and tech university for Korea, which is back then a quite underdeveloped country, they probably didn't know how it would proceed and whether it would be successful or not. Nevertheless, they had a dream and had a solid plan. I believe it is that dream and plan that led to what KAIST is today. You probably wouldn't know how your future will evolve later on, but if you dream of your future, set up a plan and exercise it in the real world, one of you or all of you will become a person called pioneer in one area or another. This event 
is not for competition, but for thinking together for a better and sustainable future. I hope all of you enjoy this conference to a full extent and learn a lot from each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ru and Professor Yu, for the speeches and all the support in the organization. Since its creation, in 1971, KAIST has withheld its mission and vision to educate researchers and take the lead in innovations to serve the happiness and prosperity of humanity. As one of the world's top science and technology institutes, KAIST and all of its faculty members and students have always been interested in solving the most crucial challenges in this world with creative and innovative scientific approach. Pioneers 2071 is not an exception. It also supports KAIST vision into the future. Now we're moving to the overview of the conference. Participants of the conference have applied as teams of four to eight university students from all around the world. We have received applications from 19 teams consisting of a total 107 students from 28 colleges and universities worldwide. The planning committee has prepared three possible global challenges that are likely to happen in the near future for the participants of this conference to explore. Each team has chosen one of the three scenarios, so the entire conference will proceed in three independent divisions. Participants have studied the scenarios, analyzed the statistical data provided alongside, and have done thorough research in their fields in order to come up with proposed solution. During the conference, teams will present their ideas and discuss how each other's proposals may or may not be effective in resolving the crisis. The purpose of the debate is to promote the collections of policies and products of each team and to verify and improve the validity and rationality of the results derived from other teams. We are proud to present the scenarios, the three challenges that were given to the participants of the Pioneers 2071 conference. Let us dive right into each scenario. Pandemic, the next outbreak. It is now autumn 2031, 10 years after Pioneers conference. A new unknown virus has just been discovered after a minor outbreak. Scientists have, con have confirmed that this is a new strain of coronavirus, just like the ones that have previously caused large epidemics, such as SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. Despite that it's just a minor outbreak, scientists expect this disease to become one of the most contagious diseases in the modern history. Some reasons for this include that, one, it is transmitted not only through droplets, but also in the form of aerosol. The virus, in the form of aerosol particle type, can travel as far as 6 meters. The incubation period of the virus can be as long as 6 weeks. Just imagine, a person can be inf infected without even knowing and possibly transmit the disease for one and a half months. This makes the previously known measures of coping with the epidemics, such as social distancing or wearing regular masks, far less efficient. The team considers a large city of Mount West with a population of 8 million. By the date, there have been 222 confirmed cases of the novel disease. The scenario calls the participants to think about many potential problems, such as shortage of masks or possible inevitability of a strict lockdown. The latter, unfortunately, causes enormous damage to the economy and the population's mental health. The situation is also made more difficult due to that some people think that everyone is acting too cautiously and do not comply with the preventive measures. This causes even faster spread of the disease. The main challenge of the scenario for the participants to consider is to design policies and technologies and determine how they can be introduced so that people can maintain normality in their lives as much as possible under the threat of a pandemic. Participants are called to think about the purpose of taking preventive measures and come up with the solutions that will be applicable in maintaining a society during the period of a novel virus outbreak. Environment, pollution and climate change. Now, let us move forward by 20 years to the year 2051. We consider a country, Greenland, that just gained its independence less than a century ago, after a few decades after World War II. It used to be a relatively poor country that would sustain itself by the means of local agriculture. However, in the following several decades, the country put rapid industrialization and development as its main priority, ignoring the negative influence of it on the environment. By the early 2020s, the time of the Pioneers Conference, Greenland was about to be considered one of the developed countries. The environmental situation around the world has already undeniably and significantly worsened by that time. However, the Greenland has not yet realized the importance of the problem. Today, in 2051, the atmosphere is full of pollutants. Average temperature has increased by the amounts that nobody would even imagine 30 years ago. The sea level has risen by tens of meters. 
The climate of the Greenland has obviously changed along with global warming. This causes deaths both directly and indirectly. People do not only die because of severe heat waves, but also because of diseases that would never travel as far from the equator as Greenland's latitude. Finally, there is some international pressure on Greenland to reduce the pollution, which is extremely burdensome for a young economy of the country. This even causes political instability within Greenland. This scenario requires the participants to come up with policies and methods for Greenland to resolve the crisis. One of the main questions to the participants is to think whether economic growth and environmental protection are compatible goals. Economics, Education and AI. Now, let us move 20 years into the future, to the year 2071. We now consider another country, AROC, that has now become a worldwide leader in the field of artificial intelligence, AI, for a few decades. The AI technology has already reached such a state that AI itself and other AI-related applications such as robots outperform humans in many fields by factors of thousands or even tens of thousands. It is clear that AI has dramatically affected the economies of many countries, but in the AROC country this has reached a totally different level. The biggest problem caused by the ubiquitous, ubiquitous use of AI is that it takes the jobs away from the people. Essentially, many of the positions totally disappeared and people struggle finding new jobs they can do. Thus, one of the main questions of the scenario is to analyze the jobs market of AROC in 2071 and see what new jobs will be created, which ones of the traditional sectors will survive and even try predicting which ones will thrive. In addition, the government of AROC has come up with a standardized test for the high school students in an effort to assess the students holistically and choose the most competent ones to get the jobs. The test itself has, pu has put high, huge stress on students. Some of them work too hard and don't spend time with their friends or families, which is unhealthy. Other students give up completely and leave schools for being unemployed. Finally, the test has introduced and strengthened the class difference in the society. Although all unemployed citizens of AROC receive universal basic income, the working class receives much higher salaries, and they form a kind of elite. This scenario only shows few representative challenges of such society. The participants are encouraged to study and research other possible problems that AROC may face and come up with their proposed solutions. Let us now proceed to the logistical details and schedule of the conference. The team proposals and the performance in the debate will be assessed by the judges panel and the peer review as well as the voters from the public. Any one of you, dear viewers, can apply to become a voter at any moment during the voting period to main rounds. You can do that regardless of whether you participate in the conference. To become a voter, please go to pioneers.kaist.ac.kr and navigate to Participation Guide for Voters. Voters also receive different points based on the performance of the team they have voted for. The top 10 voters of each division will get rewards. In addition, any viewer of the live stream can ask questions to the teams during the debate. Keeping the limitation in mind, the MCs will select few questions and address to the teams if possible. Now let us take a look at the schedule of the conference. We will start today with the debate in the Environment, Pollution and Climate Change Division. The debate will proceed in three stages. The first one starts at 9 a.m. And, uh, and proceeds for two hours. Afterwards, we have a break, a two-hour break, and at 2 p.m. we have another debate. After another two-hour break, we have the final debate in the evening. The same schedule goes for tomorrow. As you can see in the red box, the voters can vote for the main round participants throughout today, tomorrow, and until noon on Friday, the 5th of February. Remember, all the times are in GMT plus 9. Unfortunately, not many teams have applied to participate in the pandemic division, so we will have a presentation by one team in that scenario on the final day, February 7, followed by the questions and answers from the board of the professors and the audience. The top three teams from the Environment, Pollution and Climate Change division and the Education, Economics and AI division will advance to the final round. In the final round, the teams will present their same proposals, but with the updates that they will have incorporated by learning from the debates. During the weekend, uh, especially on Sunday, everyone can vote for the participants of the final round. We end the conference on Sunday with the closing and awards ceremony at 4.15 p.m. After a while, we will proceed to the more detailed explanations for the voters and the participants. In the meantime, I would like to use the opportunity to thank every single member of the planning committee, KAIS administration, and other internal and external teams involved in this conference and 
and thank them for making this possible, making this possible despite the pandemic. I would finally like to thank everyone currently watching us live on YouTube and remind you that if you have any questions or inquiries, feel free to contact us at the email address that you can find on the website of the conference. We will address every issue to the best of our abilities. Now, it is time to make all the rules crystal clear to all of our participants and the voters. We encourage non-participants to listen to these two in order to know what the teams are trying to achieve and to understand the sophisticated process of voting better. Dear participants, let me remind you very quickly of the rules and the format of the debate. First off, each team presents their proposed solution for 15 minutes. No questions from anyone are allowed at that point. The participants share their desktop screens and present freely. Afterwards, there is a 10-minute break, during which the teams prepare for the debate, taking the opponent proposals into account. Next, there are predetermined questions from the MCs, one to two questions per team. Afterwards, the teams ask questions to each other and respond to the questions from professors. The number of questions a team can ask is limited. Please use those wisely. Finally, there are concluding speeches from each team for five minutes. Again, no questions from anyone are allowed. Also, please remember that before the debate, each team have selected two people called free debaters who will be presenting in the proposal presentation and if desired in the concluding speech. Every other member of a team is allowed to ask and answer question with the MC's permission though. Finally, and most importantly, let us take a look at the main criteria by which the participants will be assessed. Don't forget that this is not the only thing that determines the final result. There is a peer review and the public vote. The main criteria are there on the screen and they are self-explanatory. But let me read the, through the list. Comprehension and analysis, quality of solutions, investigation and research, use of argumentation, logic and persuasiveness, engagement into the debate, attitude and behavior. Dear voters, now let us take a look at the voting and ranking system. Don't forget that you have to enter a valid email address in order to receive an email with the link that will allow you to vote. In the main rounds, today and tomorrow, each voter can vote for three teams in each division, totaling to six teams. You will get the points based on whether the teams you have voted for advance to the finals. If all the te three teams you voted for advance to the finals, you get 120 points. If just two teams get to the finals, you are a lucky winner of 72 points. For example, if I vote for teams A, B, and C, but only A and C make it to the finals, I receive 72 points. Lastly, if I just happen to guess one team to get to the finals, I receive 60 points. But what if your mind was totally different from what the judges and other voters have decided? Well, you still get as much as four points, but have a chance for an epic comeback in the finals. And this is where it gets slightly more complex. In the final round, every voter gives the scores to the teams based on the perceived ranking. The top team receives three points, the second place receives two points, and the third place gets one point. That is, if for instance, I believe that team A must get the first prize, team B gets the second prize, and I didn't like the performance of team C, I will allocate three, two, and one points to teams A, B, and C respectively. Now, how many points does a voter get depending on, their res on the final results? As you can see from the table on the left, a voter is given the highest scores if they guess the correct ranking of the team. For example, if my favorite team, the one that I gave three points, wins the first place in their division, I receive 75 points as a voter. You can also find this table on pioneers.kais.ac.kr in participation guide for voters. Please make sure to study it in detail. We will consider one example. Let us say there are teams X, Y, and Z competing in the final for the education, economics, and AI. Say, for example, I, an enthusiastic voter, believe that team, X, that team X was the best, Y did slightly worse, and team Z did not impress me at all. Then, I give three points to team X, two points to team Z, sorry, two, two points to team Y, and one point to team Z. Later, on the final day, the results come out, and team X wins the first prize, Z the second prize and Y the third prize. Then I obtain 75 points because I correctly chose team X plus 25 points for giving team Z one point plus 27 points for that I gave two points to team Y. This totals in 127 points plus whatever I have scored in the voting period for the main round on February three and four. 
We are now ready to proceed to the first debate for today. Today we start with the division environment, pollution and climate change. The first debate is to start at 9 a.m. and it will be between teams Pioneer, Greedy Green and Just in Time. Dear participants, please join the indicated Zoom sessions on time. Voters and viewers, stay tuned in YouTube live stream. The debate is to start at 9 o'clock GMT plus 9.